Hey guys, uh, Nick Shredelm here. Um, welcome to our ultrasound guided IV how-to video. In this video, what we're gonna go over is anatomy, uh, how to, to the various controls of the ultrasound machine, uh, how to look for the correct uh, spots to poke, go through the squish test, how to look for bifurcations. We're also gonna go through how to place the regular IV, the long IV, and how to do a flip poke. So, Really excited to put this together. So first anatomical region we'll talk about here is the AC, the antecubital. So right in there, I know a lot of people, we like to go there. It's nice big fat veins. Um, anytime I'm doing an ultrasound IV, if I have other options, I will avoid the AC. Just simply for the fact that every time the patient moves their arm, bends it, um, we're shutting off those fluids or antibiotics or whatever they're infusing. So whenever I'm ultrasounding, I avoid the AC, but it is a good spot to start and find a good vein. So right here, got that nice one. And now I'm going to track it down into the forearm. As you can see, this vein is my favorite vein. It's called the basilic vein. It is my go-to on critical patients. Um, even when a patient has low cardiac output, you can typically still find this vein. Uh, I like to put the long 18 gauge um, catheters into this. Uh, essentially, once you have the long 18 in there, I would feel comfortable running pressors into this vein. So there again, it is my go-to for uh, sick patients with low cardiac output. Uh, it is the basilic vein. Just a quick reminder, the basilic vein is often used for pick lines and hemodialysis devices and should be avoided unless absolutely necessary to, to access. And finally, another nice big vein that you can find is the cephalic. It is on the top portion of your arm um, and this one runs all the way up the arm, as you can see it there all the way up where it joins in with the basilic into the subclavian eventually. All right, so some first basic controls. Um, if the ultrasound probe is not on the correct probe, the button is here. You want the linear probe. It's right here. That's the linear probe. That's the one you want for IVs and flood pokes. So you just press the black button. Now, sometimes it's not on the correct exam mode. Um, so you have to press exam, which is right here. So press exam, and then you can use the uh, keypad and move it to the correct exam. So use the keypad or go Venus and hit select. Now you're on the correct exam. Um, depth. You can't really see it right now because we're not on the arm, but depth buttons, so up and down. When I do mine, I like to have my depth all the way out um, to start and then kind of zoom in on that vein I want. Um, and then gain, so gain will be your brightness. So lighter, darker. One thing also that some people when they're first starting out uh, have trouble with is they don't know which way to orient their probe. Um, sometimes if you move the probe left, you'll actually get shift right in the fit in the uh, picture. So one rule of thumb to make sure that you're always in the correct position is you have your indicator on the probe. It's that small ridge there. Um, that indicator must line up with the indicator on the screen. So the green dot there. So always, no matter which side of the patient you're on, you should always have those in the same orientation, left, left. On the probe is the arrow. So that arrow actually is an indicator that aligns with your uh, dots. And so if you place this on the skin and then it lines up with the dots, then that is your orientation. Each dot is half a centimeter. So once you're starting to um, look at depth, um, make sure that you're poking 
with the extended tubing no more than um, one centimeter to one, one, one and a half centimeters deep uh, or else you will run out of catheter before you've actually fully um, placed the line. Uh, this can cause IVs to blow and issues with CT and transfusion issues as well and uh, infiltrates. When you're inserting the IV, um, you can't go straight down. You have to go at an angle. So as you're angling, you need to keep that in mind too and how long of an IV catheter you're using. So if your vein is already at the one and a half centimeters deep, um, that's a potentially hazardous poke because you're gonna have to go in at an angle so you're gonna lose length on that IV catheter on your way there. Um, so just keeping that in mind as well, um, that the angle is gonna eat up some of your catheter length as well. So typically trying to stay in that one centimeter depth range. Here's the squish test. So the squish test is when you apply pressure with the probe to the skin and it closes your vein or the patient's vein. So we see here, we've got this nice big vein right here. Squish test, it disappears. However, you still see the pulsatile artery below it. So we know that this is a vein and it is an okay spot to place an IV. So one thing I will look for before I um, even poke is I will trace a vein down the entire length of a catheter. So what I'll do is what I'm searching for is bifurcations. So right there, we've got a split in this vein. So I know I need to poke above that bifurcation and I'll sometimes mark the skin right where that is at so that I avoid that area. So always be looking for bifurcations before you poke. First things first, we're gonna show you how I set everything up so that you can do this just as a single person. Um, also, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the walk the dog technique, which is not affiliated with anything. It's just kind of something I've developed that just makes you a reminder to really walk that needle all the way through the vessel. Um, so initially get everything out, um, everything's ready to go. I already scoped out where I'm gonna go um, do that ahead of time, make sure you got a good vein, watch for those bifurcations. So how I set this up is I actually put my empty 10 cc on my extension tubing so I can draw blood right when I um, poke. First thing, I'll take the little white strip and I'll put it on the left hand. Um, this just makes it easier for me. I will get this tourniqueted. I'll have them just position. Uh, arm down is usually the best um, and most comfortable for most folks. Um, and make sure you have lots of stuff to clean off uh, your ultrasound jelly once it's placed. So always have that just ready to go uh, right within arm's reach. Everything else, um, just having it out. Um, so one technique I will show you guys is I get my catheter out before I've cleaned. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to trace that vein down. So I already kind of pre-looked. Get some more jelly on there. And I've tried, I've decided that I'm going to go in her left forearm. Uh, she's got a nice vein there. Okay, so I'll take the back side of my IV. I'll see where my arrow is on my ultrasound probe. That's aligned up with my dots. And I will just put a little mark on the skin, just like that. So I'll just mark the skin so I know exactly where I'm going to poke. And so that just helps me clean um, directly where I'm going. So I'm gonna clean, clean, clean. Get all that jelly off there. Usually use one, but two, two is always better. So then you can still see my mark, but I know my area is clean. And then I'll apply the jelly back to the probe. While that's drying, you want that dried.
Okay, are you ready? Yep. All right, so then I'll walk that probe down just above to where I've cleaned. That mark is still present. I'll find that vein. All righty, poke on three, okay? One, two, three, poke. So now I've broke scan, bring my probe back a little ways, find the tip of that needle. So as you can see, there's my needle. You see that on the video. So you see that? Okay, so right there I've located my needle and I see that I'm just above that vein. So now I'm gonna angle down. Sorry, a little poke. And I'm gonna walk my ultrasound forward as I advance that needle down. Okay, so now I'm in. You see the needle there? So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to slowly walk the dog. So I'm gonna advance that needle, keeping it right in the middle of the vein. And as I push the tip of that needle forward, I'm gonna walk the ultrasound probe forward as well, making sure that I'm staying right in the middle. You doing okay? Yep. So we're in, we're just walking the dog. And so we walk the dog to ensure that the tip of that needle and that catheter has been threaded. Um, a lot of times people will see flash in their needle and they will just try to advance. This oftentimes will um, cause an issue where you're actually um, kinking the catheter and you're blowing the vein. So always make sure you're walking the tip of that needle all the way up and you see I'm going the full length of the catheter here especially in the forearm where there's a lot of valves and then I'm advanced so I walk the dog about half that catheter in I pull that needle out just a little bit so that it's inside the catheter so I know I'm not going to poke through I'm gonna clean all that jelly off. And then I'm gonna hold left hand pressure with my thumb to occlude that vein. So she's not gonna bleed. Those don't retract. They don't have a safety device on them. So always just maintain um, good control of the needle so that you don't get a stick. We're placing this catheter on, or the extension tubing onto the catheter, and we're really twisting it, making sure that it's tight. We know when we send them to CT, um, we might have issues if that isn't tight. So now I've cleaned this all off, white stickers going down, and now I'm gonna draw my blood. Drawn blood, it's drawn nice and easy. Uh, if I get a full 10 cc's, um, that's great. And then I'm gonna flush. The tourniquet. And I'll sometimes clean that blood off there too, just cause it can make a mess. And then flush in, cold flush, might feel it. It's not. Any pain with that? No. no. Okay. And then drop the rest of the tag down. So then really to grow really proficient in this, taking those shorter 20 gauge needles, um, finding those more superficial veins and really just walking the dog and working on that technique uh, really ensures that that IV is going to be a good IV for the whole length of the hospital stay. Okay, so now we're gonna show and demonstrate the, how to place a long 18 gauge in the basilic vein. Uh, like to point out that this is a last ditch effort um, per policy and for PIC team, they would prefer that we avoid using the basilic unless we absolutely have to. So situations for this would be 
severe septic patient needing pressors, um, extended amount of time for like a central line or something like that, or someone who needs a mass transfusion quickly and we don't have good enough access for that. Um, so there again, like I said earlier in the video, Basilic is a great vein, especially when the patient has a little cardiac output. Um, you can typically still find it and get to it. So right here, we see that nice basilic vein coming down into the AC and it bifurcates right there, right above the antecubital region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark right where that bifurcation is and then I'm going to clean that marked area and I'm going to poke right above where that bifurcation starts and avoid and we'll avoid it. And I'm going to let that dry. Find my mark, put my probe above the mark, and there's my nice big basilic vein. So, on the count of three, okay? Ready? One, two, and three, big poke, big bite. Okay, so now I broke skin, I walk my probe cover back, and I can see that catheter. See that? Angling down, following the Okay, so we see the tip of my needle in white there. I'm right above the vein. So we're gonna push in to the vein. Nice and easy. And boom. Always important, follow it. All the way in. And you see that needle right in the middle of the basilic. So now we're gonna walk the dog, advance through the middle of that vein, advance my probe with my left hand, advance, 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 advance. And we are all the way in. And I only had to advance that catheter like less than a centimeter. So same as before, Left hand pressure, lots of pressure, including. And then we're going to clean all that jelly off. We're going to draw back. Make sure we got good blood return, and then we're gonna give it all back and flush. With these, we like to put the little white sticker under the catheter just for comfort, uh, avoid skin breakdown, because these will most likely be in for a long period of time. And then, boom. have our long 18 in our basilic. Alrighty, so in this portion of the video, what we're gonna go through is how to um, collect a uh, flood poke, but we're also gonna do it like we would be collecting um, a set of cultures. Um, so we'll have our big culture syringe, but for this video, we're just gonna use the 10 cc. Uh, so to get that set up, I usually, if I'm just flat poking, I'm gonna go right to the AC. Uh, nice big one there. Um, be a nice easy stick. It's right up top. It's less than 0.5 centimeters from the top of the skin, uh, which is a very easy um, location for us to get our flat poke needle to. So first things first, what we will do there again, we need to mark our site. So I'll take the backside. Uh, back side of the syringe to do it. Um, so I know I'm gonna poke right there. So I'm just gonna take that. 
little mark on her skin, ready to go. Now I know exactly where I'm going to clean. Prep the skin first, because this needs to be dry before we poke, just like with any other culture. So chlorhexidine, chlorhexidine. Okay, now we'll set that to dry. Um, while that's drying, we'll set up our probe with our probe cover. Uh, it's not completely sterile, it's kind of a semi-sterile technique, um, but anything we can do to keep from getting contaminated cultures. So probe, it opens up just out of the blue sheet, um, and then it comes with sterile jelly. So just rip it off. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up Drop all the lube right there in the corner. The probe, probe cover. And then we're gonna insert our probe like so. And then we're gonna pull it through. And our rubber band should just go on top. Trying to avoid the tip of that probe. So kind of a semi-sterile technique and we'll just put it in there just like that. So it's keeping the top clean. The chlorhexidine it. I still have my mark so I'm gonna put this the ultrasound probe just above where my mark is. Grab the tip of my needle. Line everything up. One, two, three, poke right on my spot. Bring the probe back just a little bit. Find the tip. See the tip of that needle. And we're just going to walk it right into the vein, just like we're doing an IV. Oh, a little far. And then we'll walk it in, just like we are with the IV. And draw. Easy peasy. Thank you for watching this video on ultrasound guided IVs for nurses. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please follow us on YouTube. Also, uh, drop any comments or send me messages on any future um, information you guys want or videos you might like. Thanks.